We will uh, address a tough issue, how to deal with internet competition. And uh, we have been working on this topic in the last three months quite heavily in order to, uh, uh, to present this, uh, this lecture today. The first thing I would like to, uh, to tell you before, uh, before we start is that uh, uh, to prepare this lecture, we worked on three different countries, uh, France, Spain, and the United States. And uh, I would like also to thank uh, uh, Royal Canin because uh, we were very lucky with Perret. Uh, we were totally free to investigate and to build up this, uh, this uh, lecture. And I have to say that Royal Canin didn't even uh, uh, review the, uh, the outcome. And frankly, we, we, we still hope that we will be good friends at the end of the lecture as well. So, uh, uh, because it's, uh, as you know, a, a, tough, uh, a, a, a tough issue, it's about competition. Many vets around the world are not very comfortable with this competition, but we have to face it because simply it's there. So, the first uh, 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 point I have to tell you is the content of this, uh, of this lecture. We will have a few words to begin with about this competition. Uh, who are web stores? Uh, what are the characteristics, what are the main competitive advantages or disadvantages they may have versus VETS. Then, Pere will explain you the first step uh, we want to achieve in this competition uh, that covers pricing strategy and value chain. Then, I come to the second one, that is uh, how, as a VET, be able to be on the web and to sell uh, uh, over the web to, to my clients. That's uh, the, the, the second step to, uh, to compete uh, uh, efficiently against this, uh, uh, these web stores. And because it's an ongoing process, uh, new things appear every week or every month, um, we will have a, a quick look on the next steps, at least those we are able to predict, because there are many changes we are probably unable to, uh, 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 to predict today. So. Let's start with vets versus web stores. So, make it clear, we, we, we didn't wish to have this kind of competition. They came by themselves. We didn't call them, okay? Uh, I will uh, pick up two examples. The first one is from, uh, 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 from the US. In the US, the leading web store is uh, Chiwi.com. Chiwi.com is, is a company that was founded about 10 years ago, and that is quite successful. Nowadays, it's a subsidiary of uh, the first uh, uh, US uh, pet shop, actual pet shop, physical pet shop group, PetSmart. So we don't have that much detailed financial information about uh, uh, Chiwi. Nevertheless, we know that roughly they sell a little bit less than $1 billion uh, in, uh, um, in, in, in total sales, and most of these sales it comes from uh, uh, pet food. So we know that. And we know also that probably they are not very profitable. But all this information are not uh, uh, very accurate because we don't get public information about Chiwi. On the other hand, in Europe, and even we can say that it started in Europe because the, 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 the leader in Europe is called Zooplus. Zooplus is a German company founded in 1999, 20 years ago, but we expanded internationally from, let's say, 2005, 2005, 2006. And we are lucky with Duplus because Duplus is a listed company. And because Duplus is a listed company, we have many information about it. And we are able to, uh, 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 we were able with Pere to, to study it uh, 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 in details. So just some uh, information about uh, 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 Duplus. So it's a European company from of German origin, but as you can see on this map, it's not only Germany at all. It's now 25 countries where they are di directly uh, 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 present. Um, so they started to uh, uh, go from Germany to Austria, uh, uh, then to the UK, then to France, and now they are almost everywhere from Portugal to Finland and from Turkey to Ireland. So it's really a pan-European uh, uh, company. If we look at numbers, I will give you only two numbers that are very uh, relevant. The first one is about their revenues. Everything is in millions of euros. So uh, their revenues rose from 2014 to 
2018. For 2018, it's still an estimate. We are waiting for the annual report probably next week, sorry. Uh, uh, we still rely on the last estimate uh, from a little bit more than 500 million uh, uh, euros to uh, more than 1.3 uh, billion euros. So uh, you can see this uh, steady growth. It's more than 25% per year on average on uh, this period of time. On the same time, if we look at profit, I took uh, uh, earning before tax. Uh, uh, as a, a metric uh, for profit. The profit is very low. Okay. It used to be some million, uh, uh, let's say with a peak in 2016 of 18 million, and it's expected to be around zero uh, uh, last year. Why? Because in fact, uh, Zooplus uh, decided to privilege the growth to the profitability. Uh, why? Because for them, it's very important to grow now and to be clearly the leader of e-commerce dedicated to pet in Europe. And they are. Not only they are the leader of e-commerce, but they are the second most important retailers. The first one sells a little bit less than 2 billion uh, uh, euros. It's also a German company. I'm sorry for German-speaking people, but I have much difficulties to pronounce the name of, uh, of this company, so-called Fresnap. And, uh, uh, and this company is very successful, uh, a little bit more than Zooplus. But just to give you an idea, this company, to reach 1.8 uh, 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 billion euros, needs 1,500 physical stores. They have 12,000 people. In Zooplus, you have less than 400 people. So you can see the business, the business model that are very different. So we have to compete against this, uh, 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 these web stores because they were very successful. And in addition to these two, I will simply pick up another one that you probably all know, that is Amazon. And we just had the information that last year in the US only, Amazon sold $1 billion of pet food, an increase of 20% compared to previous year. So they are, not, they are not small companies. How to compete with them? It's possible, we will explain to you, but it's, of course, difficult. So the first thing is to try to understand what are the competitive advantages if we compare vets against web stores. The most important point for the vets is that you have a very strong prescription power. This prescription power is twofold. It's first of all because you are vets. Being vets makes you legitimate to recommend nutrition because nutrition is closely connected to health, either for healthy pets or for sick pets. But it's not enough to say that you are legitimate because you are vet. You're also, you're also very much legitimate because you know the pet. You know this pet and you will make a recommendation for not for any dog or not for any poodle, or not for any six-year-old poodle, but for this poodle, Mrs. Smith's poodle, because you know everything or almost everything about Mrs. Smith's poodle. So prescription power is your main asset, and we will come back a lot on this issue. In front of that, web stores, they compete with three main advantages. The first one is obvious. According to you, what is the main competitive advantage of web stores? Price low price. So the first reason to go on the web is to get a low price, for sure. Then they have two additional advantages. The, the, the first one is that you can order whenever you want, 24-7. In reality, uh, people ordering keyboards at 3 o'clock in the morning are not that common. Nevertheless, uh, the, the peak activity of uh, uh, um, buying over the web is in between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. with a peak in between 8 and 9. And in, in between 8 and 9, many uh, vet practices around the world are closed. Not all of them, I know, but many of them are closed, at least to buy, uh, uh, to buy pet food. And, of course, the last one is home delivery. We will come back uh, uh, on that also. Just to give you a metric about low price, if we compare... Uh, 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 sorry, I have... A mistake in my uh, uh, 
in my legend. So classic vets in blue compared to web stores, and we took Zooplus in two countries, France, for two so-called SKU, sorry, SKU means stock keeping unit, so it's one reference for one bag, they are very popular one, and popular for diet food. Why diet food? Because diet food is more expensive than preventive food, and if you compete on price, you, you tend to compete on most expensive products, so diet food first of all. So uh, uh, we compared in two countries, France and Spain, for the same SKUs, and here are the uh, uh, classic uh, uh, prices for that. What is the classic prices for that? Let's say five or six years ago, almost every vet in these two countries were using the usual price. They didn't think a lot about prices. They used a standard markup rate. For instance, in France, it was 1.5 plus VAT. VAT is 20% in France, so you take the, the wholesaler price and you multiply by 1.8, you have the reselling price. It was like that five to six years uh, ago, and nowadays it's still like that in a, in a part of uh, 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 French practices, let's say maybe uh, in between one third and, and, and one half, okay? And if you put the price from Zooplus in front of that, that's the difference. The difference is huge. On SKU number one, you can see that in France it's uh, 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 roughly uh, 35 euros, a little bit more in Spain. On the SKU number, number two, that is a leaning uh, diet food for cats. The first one is the diet food for, for dog. Uh, 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 the, 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 the spread is also quite impressive. So that's the starting point, and the starting point is tough. So how to deal with that? First step, I will leave the floor, leave the floor to Pere. How to adapt your pricing strategy, and what is the impact on the value chain? You've explained the problem very nicely, and you leave me the, <laughs> 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 the solution. No? no, I think it's a very dramatic, very impacting slide, and it's normal that for many of you in the room are wondering when you see this price gap, number one, is it possible to continue selling pet food in the clinics? Number two, is it worth the effort no? to try to defend this position? And Philippe and myself, we believe it's possible and we believe it's worth it. And we have done some homework here, some data analysis that we want to, to share with you just to, to explain the, the case. No? Um, for us, the, the critical concept is competitive pricing. No surprise, no? As, as, as you can imagine, uh, we need to be competitive in pricing. And this, in, in our view, relies on three key ideas. No? The first idea is, it may seem obvious, but it's good to, to verbalize it, it's not necessary to be cheaper than Zooplus. It's not even necessary to match the same price as Zooplus. You can be a little bit more expensive than Zooplus, but not too much more expensive. No? And for us, this little bit more expensive means somewhere between uh, two, three, five euros per bag. Now that should be the ideal price point where we believe that there is a defendable position. Of course, now we need to see how this is possible and if the arithmetics work. Um, the second important concept is that in order to do this, you have to change your mindset and we have to stop thinking about percentual margin. So now the, the important question, the, the important conversation is not how much percentage margin you make on this bag, but rather is how many euros of margin you make on this bag and how many bags you are going to sell. So it's not about anymore about making a 35, 40, 45% margin on one bag. It's about maybe making 10, 12, 15, 20 euros in one bag and selling many times this bag. So this is a, 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 a mindset change. Um, and another important idea is that this effort is worth it because we have some data that shows that selling pet food, apart from the profit that it may generate, it has a very, very important positive side effect on the rest of your business. We have some data we'll, we'll share with you showing that clients who buy pet food from your clinic are very attractive clients because they behave in a very interesting way, not just for pet food, but for the rest of your services. Okay. So let's start defining more uh, quantitatively what do we mean by this competitive pricing. And as uh, Philippe was already anticipating, this is the dramatic slide no? where we were seeing the, the huge price gap between the classic pricing and the, and the Zooplus pricing. 
And this new, um, let me see if I have the pointer okay, here. Yeah. As you can see, this uh, re uh, green uh, column uh, exemplifies the, the suggested competitive pricing that we are proposing, no? that as you see, is somewhere between uh, three and five euros above the Zoplus price. But as you see, it's quite far away, it's quite lower from the classic pricing. No? The evidence that we have shows that when you are competitive, the numbers work and that you really sell much more. This is what an economist would call price elasticity. The question is, is there really price elasticity? If a veterinary practice is competitive in price, do they really see an increase in the volume of sales? And the answer is yes. We have tested this. In Spain, in VMS, we have a panel of around 500 clinics where we capture data and we can follow the, the transactions and we can see what happens with prices, with number of transactions, and with total sales. And this, what, what you're going to see here is what happens. We have classified the clinics in quartiles. Yes, maybe you can give me a hand, please, thank you. This is the, the highest quartile of clinics that we're selling this uh, reference, this uh, large That's bag of diets in the most expensive price range, 106 or more. Then the second quartile, the second 25% of clinics that were selling at a lower range between 94 and 106, but still far from the Zoplus price. The third range, 84 to 93 price, okay, getting closer to the competitive price that we defined. And then finally, the lowest quartile, the 25% of clinics that were more competitive, more aggressive on their pricing. And <coughs> this is the sales for this, uh, in this 100, uh, sorry, in these 500 clinics, this is the sales of this particular product. This is the number of bags. We have indexed it to 100. So if the most expensive clinics were selling, let's say an average of 100 bags of this product in one year, the most competitive ones, the last uh, bracket was selling almost three times more, 2.8 uh, times more, right? So number one idea is when you become competitive, you really sell more. Now we repeated the analysis uh, for the other uh, reference, which is a cat dietary product, a mid-size, I think it's a three and a half kilo bag, something like that. And once again, we split the sample in quartiles of clinics, depending on the price. And once again, well, with a slight, uh, a strange behavior on the second quartile, but once again, you see the trend. You see that the group of clinics that was really competitive, that was getting closer, getting cl not, not lower or not matching the surplus price, but getting closer, was able to sell two and a half times more than the clinics that remained on the old classic price. Okay, so it really works when, when, when you take this. Now, the, the issue, of course, and, and some of you are already doing calculations is, Yes, but what happens to my margin? No? Because if I need to work with this <laughs> very small uh, or, or, or the, the, w w with this drastic reduction in prices, what happens to my margin? And of course, okay, this is the, the, the classic uh, value chain. No? In, the, in this, uh, maybe Philippe, if you don't mind, you can signal. You see the, the purchasing price. Now here it's important the word net. Net purchasing price means the price at which you buy from the wholesaler or the manufacturer applying all the discounts that you get. Not just the price, but the price minus the rebates, rappels, however you want to call them. Because if you forget to add that, then the calculation is totally confused. Okay, but if you apply that, in the classic model, in the, in the old good days, you could say, in the old good days, this was the value chain. No? You had purchasing price of 44, margin 41. Now this is what Philip was describing some minutes ago, and then the VAT. Now what happens? If you say, no, this is unsustainable, I am not going to sell one bag if I continue like this, I need to move to this competitive price that uh, Philippe and Pedro are telling me. Well, of course, drastic price reduction, drastic margin reduction, yes, from 41 to, to 17, no? But the, the, the question here is, what is better? Is it better 41 of one bag or maybe of zero bags or 17 of three bags, no? as, as we saw in the, in the Spanish price elasticity study. So, you know, this is the change of mindset, no? Is it, do I work, do I pay my people with percentages or do I pay, pay my employees with euros, no? So at the end, this is the, the, the question, no? And finally, uh, there is something that make, may make this a little bit smoother and better for you, 
which is the need to be, of course, not only competitive on price, but also competitive on how you purchase. And the logic is that if you sell more because you are more price competitive, you will be able also to buy better and more professionally, no? Because you will have more volume, because you may join other people and buy together. And then if you do that, um, you will be able to still price competitively, but the blue part of the, of the chain, which is your margin, will be slightly better than in the second scenario, okay? So uh, still, we will never, never again get the 42 euros. I think those, those days are gone. I mean, even we like it or not, those days are gone. Never again. But we can aim at getting this uh, 22, 28, uh, 23, sorry, 22.8, 23 for a good number of bucks. Okay. Now, for, for me, this is the, the, in my section, in my section, not in yours, but in my section, this is the most important slide because this slide is the one that shows the positive side effect of pet food on the rest of your business. Okay, and here what we did is in our, uh, once again, in our database in BMS, we did a study with 54,000 puppies and kittens that were clients of 475 clinics in Spain. So these puppies and kittens were visiting the clinics for the first time in the year 2017. And what we did is we analyzed their behavior on the following year, on 2018. Because on 2017, some of them were new to the clinic in June, others in October, others in December. So to allow for a full year of analysis, we analyzed how they were behaving on year two, on year 2018. And we split these 54,000 puppies and kittens in two groups. One group was the group that was buying pet food in the clinic, and the other group was the, the larger group that was not buying pet food in the clinic. And we looked at how many times they went to the clinic, how much money they spent on the clinic, and how much money they spent on pet food and on other services and products. Okay, and this is the, the result. So if you look, Philip, if you help me please on the, yes, exactly. This first column is the young pets that were buying pet food in the clinic. These were 22% of these 50,000 puppies. And you see some very attractive uh, KPIs, so, some very attractive figures. Now you see that on average, they were visiting their practice almost nine times per year. And out of these nine times, only in 2.8 of the times they were buying pet food. So there were seven other transactions that were not related to pet food. They spent on average 408 uh, euros on the clinic per year only 54 of which were pet food. The other were other services and products. And interestingly enough, from a medical point of view, if you wish, these clients, well, we, we tried to look for a indicator of medical compliance or, or uh, well-being, and they happen to be sterilized in a higher percentage than the others, which is quite obvious, no? quite normal, because they go more often. They are clearly more bonded to the practice, right? On the other column, what you see is the same indicators for that 78% uh, of clients that uh, were not buying pet food in the clinic, no? And you see the, the huge, the dramatic difference, no? They were going to the practice almost three times less. They were spending, uh, yeah, not three times less, but almost, and, and they were, uh, as a result of this, probably also uh, less well taken care of, okay? So, um, you know, if, and I'm, I'm going to finish with, with this slide, my, my section. Um, I will try to summarize the key ideas, no? Number one, um, it's possible to reverse this trend by being competitive in prices. It takes an effort, obviously. It requires changing your mindset. It requires buying better. It requires focusing more on volume times euros than on percentages. Uh, this requires better, more professional, more disciplined buying on your side as well. It's not a zero sum game. It's not that uh, what you improve in your conditions goes against the manufacturer because we are convinced that it can be a win-win game. If you reverse this trend, you can sell more, you can sell at lower price, you can buy better, and still you and the manufacturer can end up increasing the pie. 
And finally, uh, we believe that the, all this effort is worth because of, the, of this important implication, of this important connection between the pet food and the rest of your activity. Okay? That was the first step. And before uh, uh, going to the second one, we would like to, uh, um, to make a, a, a debriefing of, uh, of this first step. First of all, uh, and this debriefing will be focused on France, because it, on fr in France, we worked uh, in, this, in that direction uh, since uh, uh, 2013. So it's, it has been six years now. We have a, a quite a good uh, uh, overview uh, 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 of the outcome. We have many, many positive uh, 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 outcomes. The first one is that it's really, and the main one, it's really efficient. Um, we were able to reduce the client losses. We, we, we were able to regain many lost clients to increase the average sales per recruited patient, to grow the sales, and to improve uh, uh, the, the, the category gross margin. So we made less money on every bag, but thanks to better, uh, 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 a greater number of bags, the gross margin on category was uh, uh, higher. So it was very, very positive. Nevertheless, we faced a reality is that, in fact, let's say roughly 25% of uh, practices were really successful with this strategy. So it's not nothing, but it's not everyone. And we had to understand why uh, we, we face this, uh, this kind of a sailing around 25%. In fact, there are some difficulties. The main one is uh, about uh, 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 the workload. In fact, to do that, it's quite uh, a, a lot of work. Uh, it's time consuming, and I would say that moreover, it's a question of organization. And uh, uh, because you have to follow the competition, uh, you have to adjust the price, because we spoke about Zooplus or Chiwi, but in fact, you have uh, several uh, websites. You have to look at that to know that this one is important, this one is not. So it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a problem. And it's quite difficult. Uh, uh, to do it if you are alone in your, uh, uh, in your, in your practice. The second, uh, uh, the second uh, uh, limitation is that, in fact, uh, e-commerce uh, uh, grow, uh, grew a lot during this period of time and uh, is really attractive with uh, 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 a lot of e-marketing uh, 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 because of the easy ordering and before of the home delivery. So probably it was a very good first step, but it's not enough. Uh, some, once again, 25% of practices that not bad are able to compete like that, but for many others, it's, uh, uh, it's difficult. So the second possibility is to, uh, uh, to go directly on the web, to fight with the same weapons as competitors, and to go on the, uh, uh, on the web. So how to do that? This time, the, uh, the, the, the first signal came from the U.S., it came from the U.S. 13 years ago with the first company, uh, uh, the name is VetSource, uh, that helped Vet to, uh, uh, to sell over the web. Uh, it's very important to understand that this, uh, 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 in the U.S., the first concern was not pet food, but pharmacy. And uh, we will come back to that. And then a second one, very successful also, uh, uh, Vet for Choice appeared a little bit later, uh, at the beginning of this decade. And these two companies are very successful. They have several thousands of, uh, uh, of vet practices uh, involved in, uh, uh, in, in the U.S. And uh, as you know, maybe Vet for Choice just merged with uh, uh, the, the first wholesaler, uh, Henri Schein, in, uh, in the U.S. to, uh, to form a new corporate. Uh, uh, the name is Covetrus. So they are very successful. They raised a lot of money. And uh, 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 it was something that was interested for us. Uh, the second point came from France later, at the beginning of this decade, uh, some so-called uh, independent vet, vet online. In the US, we use the word uh, online pharmacy. Uh, independent vet online, and with two successful companies, Chronovet, this company was founded uh, five years ago, and uh, uh, um, it's, it, with that, vets are able, uh, if you look at the motto, the motto is the price of web and the follow-through of your vet. And a second one that is uh, only two years ago, quite successful also, Place de Veto, uh, uh, and, and you have 
here uh, a drawing about uh, uh, the, 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 the process. If we compare these two tools from the US and from France, we have this, uh, uh, um, this result. So US, France, first things I already mentioned, in the US it came firstly about pharmacy, but now it's pharmacy and pet food. In France, it's basically pet food and some pharmacy, but nothing to be compared with, uh, 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 with the US. The second common point is that both act on the behalf of vets. In fact, it's a double delegation, to simplify a little bit. The vet delegate the, the purchasing to this, uh, uh, to this company and delegate also the sales through a, a web platform. Big difference. In the US, the system relies on home delivery. Pet owners are delivered at home. In France, it's different. It's a pickup in practice. Pet owners are delivered at the veterinary practice, and pet owner has to uh, uh, go to the vet practice to pick up uh, uh, their, their pet food. Another big difference from a technological point of view, uh, uh, um, the tools from the US are much more sophisticated, web-based platform, website, and app, and the vets can set the range they want to sell, the prices they want, uh, they want to sell, although there are recommended prices and that 95% of vets follow this, uh, this recommendation, at least they have the possibility to set that. In France, it's a little bit uh, rougher, uh, web-based platform, but it's only responsive uh, websites. We, we, we are still waiting for app. Uh, and it's a preset range of prices you can't, uh, 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 you can't uh, 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 tailor in your, in your practice. If you go on on this comparison, um, we can say that uh, uh, an both are based on powerful purchasing groups, very powerful in the US, quite powerful in France also. Uh, the, the, the business model in the US is fixed and proportional fees. In France, it's a, su a fixed subscription. For, for a, a vet practice, you pay 90 euros per month, and you can use the tool. That's it. The gross margin, so sorry to come back to gross margin rate, but just to compare, in the US is roughly 25% on drugs and 12 to 17% on pet food. In France, it's not relevant on, on drugs because they are almost nothing, but uh, on pet food, it's much higher around 35%, for two reasons. First of all, we have no home delivery, and home delivery costs a lot. Home delivery, it's at least 12%. But the second thing is that French vets are very well organized as far as wall selling and moreover purchasing group are concerned. So, you remember this chart about value chain? What is the impact in France with IVO? The impact is this one, so, first of all, you lose uh, uh, three euros on prices because when you go to internet, you need to, to match the price of competitors. When you are in practice, as Perry explained, you can be three to five euros more expensive. Uh, going to the net, you lose uh, a little bit, but be careful because you, you don't sell everything uh, through, the, through the internet. I will come back to that. Nevertheless, you lose, in this case, for SKU number one, uh, about four euros. You, you can gain a, a little bit on purchase, but you, you miss 1.6 euros uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on gross margin. So it, uh, uh, it stretches a, a, a little bit your, uh, your, your, your margin. So the one word about the pricing strategy using IVO. So once again, you have to cope to competition on your IVO, but then in the clinic, your, your degree of freedom increase because you're selling uh, uh, very close at the same price uh, uh, as competition on the internet, you can be in between, let's say for uh, SKU number one, uh, 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 a big one, in between five euros and, and, and 10 euros. So if we take the, the numbers, we have 70 euros for SKU number one on the web. We need to be on the web at 70 euros, but in clinic we, we can be, for instance, at 79 and not 74 as we, uh, uh, we have shown uh, 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 previously. Important thing, if you use such a system, you must use it massively or not using it, not in between. So what does that mean? In fact, depending on the kind of bags, smaller bags in clinic sales will still be predominant. But for larger bags, because larger bags are also the most expensive ones, so competition is very important on larger bags, then you will shift 
a, a, a very large part of your sale on the IVO. And at the end, uh, in fact, in-clinic sales will be for first an emergency sales and IVO sales for the recurrent sales. And once again, it's compliance multiplied by loyalty. The no number of bags and, and the, the amount of, uh, of money you will, you will do on each, uh, on each bag. So, back to the US, because in the US we have a very clear feedback about the efficacy of, uh, of this system. If we compare a typical vet uh, to a vet using an online pharmacy on pet food sales, number of sold bags, yeah, number of sold bags per recruited patient on the first year, on the first year. A typical vet will be a, a little bit less than two, with some variation, of course. Using a, an online pharmacy, the outcome is this one. So roughly multiplied by three, with quite a, 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 a big heterogeneity from one practice for the other. Very important things, if we compare France and, and the US, we have the same result. Around 40% of practices involved in online pharmacy in the US or IVO in France don't use the system. It's strange, but it's like that. They have it, they pay for it, but they don't use it. So it's a, it's a pity. Okay, so it works. We have the tools. What are the next steps? I, I will pick up only two next steps. It will be very quick. The first is about delivery. Delivery, so we have pickup in clinic or home delivery. There is something in between that is the use of lockers. What are lockers? Lockers are this kind of big box you can find in train station or service station or, a, 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 or, 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 or commercial mall. Um, uh, this one is from Amazon. This one is from the, the, the French uh, uh, post office. And uh, uh, it's interesting because, in fact, it cut the, the price of the last mile. The last mile uh, uh, to deliver a product to, uh, 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 to someone is really costly. So using this kind of lockers, you can cut it. So there are two ways of doing that. So in between the French system, pickup in clinic, and home delivery, you may have using lockers, traditional lockers, or you may have something that is interesting, and we work on that, that is adding a proprietary locker next to the clinic, let's say on the parking lot, for instance. Then you can extend the possibility for your, your, your client to take uh, back their, uh, the bags they ordered or anything they ordered in, uh, in these uh, in this, uh, this lockers. And the second one I would like to stress on is subscription or auto ship. This was invented in, in the US by the competition, sorry to say that, by Chiwi. In fact, this system, in this system, the pet owner uh, uh, take an engagement for several months and uh, for automatic reordering. He can change or cancel, but nevertheless, he pledged to uh, uh, order it uh, regularly and the system automatically will uh, provide new orders to the pet owner. We know that on average this kind of bag will last, I don't know, two months. Every two months the new order will be automatically placed uh, 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 to, uh, to the pet owner. And uh, uh, the, um, the online pharmacy uh, in, uh, in the US uh, uh, use massively this system for two points, uh, the chronic disease management for drugs and the pet food. And the outcome is, you, you remember this, uh, this graph, the outcome is really impressive because using an OLP with a subscription, you can reach on the first year almost 10 bags per recruited patient with much less variations from uh, 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 one practice to the other. So it's really, really interesting. Take home message. First thing, e-commerce is there, it's there for a long time. If you think, okay, they don't make money, they will disappear next year, forget it. The second thing, competitive pricing. We have no strategy without competitive pricing. Sorry about that, we need to have competitive pricing. Competitive pricing needs competitive purchasing as well. And then online tools. And with that, vets can compete. We, with Perry, we believe very much that first of all, there is a win-win situation in between vets and manufacturers. And secondly, that there, is a strong there are strong synergies between services and pet food sales. It's really, really important. I remind you that the, the very impressive table Perry uh, uh, show, uh, uh, showed us. So what we want is to develop, uh, to develop the sales, you need compliance and loyalty. 
To improve compliance, don't forget that your main power is recommendation. Your recommendation improves compliance. Price competitiveness has a first effect that is, okay, it, it may improve compliance because with lower price compliance is better, but it's not the main objective. Of course, competitive pricing is primarily uh, uh, targeted as increasing loyalty. There is another very important side effect. Look at this. Once again, competitive pricing enhance recommendation. Everyone in your team is much easier to recommend food if you are competitive than if you are not. That's very, very important. If you add to that online tools, then you will add the practicality that will increase loyalty. And in on the top of that, you have comp optimized purchase. You will be able to make money thanks to that. Thank you very much.